Good afternoon, Council. Are we ready for your next witness? Yes, good afternoon, Justice. We are ready. Uh, Mr. Dubois is present. If he could be sworn, please. Sincerely affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I should give shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you, Mr. Dubois. Good afternoon, Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois, could you tell us your full name for the record? Keith Dubois. Okay. Uh, are a member of the top family member, actually. Family member. And uh, what exactly is your position with that organization at this particular point in time? Well, I would be the chairman. Chairman. Yes. Okay, Mr. Dubois. Uh, in front of you, you have a copy of your witness statement. Yes. Um, which was. <laughs> Was taken by Mr. Carlton Adams. Yes. Yes. Um, statement. Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. Um, the handwritten one. Okay. So, Mr. Dubois, uh, that document in front of you. Is yes. this, in fact, the correct witness statement that you took? Yes. It so, Mr. Ball, what I'm, what I propose to do is now is um, take you through your statement and have you just give us some responses as to what you indicated for the commission. Um, okay. But first, Justice, if you could please have as JKB number one, Mr. Dubois' statement as Exhibit One. Statement entered as Exhibit 1. Thank you, Justice. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Dubois, in your role uh, with the Pakistan Historical Society, you were aware of an article by Mr. Peter Smith? Yes, sorry, it was, yes. Okay, and could you tell us a little bit about that article? Well, he was trying to explain that his father had, there was nothing wrong with what his father had done when he was actually sitting on the committee um, doing the land appropriations deal. He was, you know, basically saying he had, he did nothing wrong. That's what he's basically saying. And um, I had, I had read it, and in fact, um, I was always interested in Tucker's Town. Um, could never get any answers from my grandmother or anybody else. So um, I had no reference to say that he, his father didn't do anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So I called Danny Richardson up and I said, listen, <laughs> we need to start a research organization to s see whether we can get to the bottom of this. And he agreed, so we eventually started the Takistan Historical Society and started to do research immediately. Mm -hmm. And in terms of that, um, did anyone else uh, assist you other than Mr. Richardson? Um, well, Danny wasn't actually with us at the time. It was uh, Aaron Tucker, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Stubble, who we just talked to. Okay. Myself. That's who actually started to do it, did the research. 
Okay, and in terms of documentation information, what documentation and or information did you come to, come to your knowledge from looking through the uh, government's archival records? Well, we we looked at a lot of maps. <coughs> we looked at a lot of the uh, lot was that was said said in the house at the time. Um, it was so much things that we looked at, and, we, and there was a lot of things we couldn't find. You know, we. Um, some of the stuff we're just finding now, actually, um, it was, it's, it's a task. <laughs> <laughs> this happened, you know, many years ago, and um, I suppose a lot of stuff has gone missing. And I mean, we haven't been able to get to the bottom of it as a result of us not being able to look at other records like the Furness and Woody records, and um, I mean, there must have been discussions between, when it, when it comes to the graveyard, there must have been some sort of discussion with the church in Canada, with the mm. church here, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, I found some records, Furness and Woody records in uh, the UK, when I was on the internet. Mm. We haven't looked at that sort of stuff. You know, it's, it's a lot of information mm. far and wide. I mean, the Amy Church, obviously we're talking to the Amy Church here, yes. because they lost their church. All that stuff we haven't been able to get to. Okay. You know. But obviously, active active information that you are searching for. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also see that you mentioned that you have deep family roots in Tuckerstown. I do, yes. Okay. Could you uh, give us a bit of information on your family roots in terms of Tuckerstown? Okay. <clears throat> My grandfather... Um, He's from the Bayesian side, right? My great grandfather's that great. No, he's my great great grandfather. Okay. My mom, grandmother's great grandfather. Um, his name was Thomas Samuel Bayesden. Okay. And he was a carpenter. You know, he married um, Catherine Ann Jackson, the daughter of John Henry Jackson, in 1874. They made their home in Hampton Parish, Tuckers Town. Uh, Thomas was very active in the Tuckestan community and Bermuda Society. He was also a member of the Art Fellows Lodge and early board members of the Barclay Society. Okay. He was very interested in education, and Thomas could be seen raising funds late in the 1800s to build a school in Tuckestown. And what was the name of that school? Um, it was called the Tobit School. Okay. Yeah, it's still standing there, still there. Okay. And then you go on to mention to us about uh, James Solomon uh, Samuel Harvey. Yes, um, that was my other grandfather. Okay. Yes. Um, and he was also a respected member of the Tobit. He was. Stuff. He was um, a lay reader in the, at the Marsden Methodist Church. Okay. And he also practically built a school by himself. Um, that obviously being the same school that your other great grandfather yes, put, put yes, money into. Some, yes. Okay, so you see him talk us. Uh, um, I also see that you were baptized at the current location of yes, the I am. Yes, Ma yes, I Ma was. Marsden Church. So yes. are you still an active member there? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Um, you mentioned that the old church was sold. Um, do you know who it was sold to? The old church would have been sold to the Bermuda Development Company. Mm -hmm. Kind of disappointing as to what... ...who was respectful of historical buildings and architecture. Mm -hmm. But they immediately, well, they changed the facade probably like, I guess, 10 years ago, completely changed it and built onto it. And it was kind of, that was, you know, I, that, that angered me a bit, yes. Okay. And do you know roughly about the time that the um, old church building was sold? It would have had to have been like probably in the mid or mid to late 1920s. I would think. Mid to late because it, it was a process to 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 get 
get it anyway to to to, to get the uh, monk church to sell it. Okay, it was a process. Um, according to. The Okay, so you're aware of that act being yes. changed in about yes. 1920? Yes, it had had to be changed. Okay. And so your understanding is that the Methodist Church sold the property to the Bermuda... They would have had to see us. And that would have included the church, but also the graveyard? Um, no, the graveyard, as I understand it, it wasn't for sale. Okay. They never agreed to sell it. As far as I know, the scope of what you understood the graveyard to be based on the savage map, would that property still, as far as you understand, belong to the Marston Church? Well, um, or if not, the descendants of the people in the graveyard. Okay. Um, yes, yes, I, I, I would think, because that, th that wasn't so. Okay. So my, my suggestion, right, what really angered me at one point was the fact that uh, if the graveyard is as big as the sand it is, right, it shows on the map, Yes. then they would have had to destroy all those graves. My grandfather was in there, mm -hmm. you know, and it sounds like if, if, if what's said is true, and it makes sense with 200 graves, that it would be bigger. Sure. And by the by, the walls. I mean, it, it goes all the way over to the church, almost over to the church. And usually, during those days, they put graveyards right beside the church. Mm -hmm. You see. So as far as you understand, that only seems reasonable that it possibly could be as big as you saw in the Savage it's, Man. It yes, it's okay. possible. Yes. Okay. And in terms of any further research, have you done any other research in terms of? trying to ascertain any further the depth of the uh, cemetery? We're still doing research. Every still time research. we look, the rabbit hole gets deeper, right? It gets, every, doing this research on Tucker's Town, everything, every time we think we've made some headway, the rabbit hole gets deeper. Okay. And it's not a nice thing. Mm -hmm. What's going on, it's not. You know, um, I had to stop doing this research at one point because I had some issues with my health. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I found that doing it really upset me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in fact, I, you know, it, I was not going to um, give any information um, because, because of that. I just came out of the hospital about recently. But it... It does upset you a lot when you when you look at things like how big the graveyard possibly could have been. And it looks like it looks like it was that size. Mm -hmm. And you think about what actually could have should have happened or could have happened, right? The graveyards being leveled to the ground, all those, you know who does that? Sure. Who does that? I mean and you know, somebody asked me, what, what, what do you want as a result of this? Yeah. I don't even know anymore. It's so much that's been done. You know, I just don't even, you know. How do you sort something like that out, you know? <laughs> I had some friends. Um, we actually, um, I actually took them down to the graveyard, and they were shocked to see that there was a driving range over the graveyard that's there now. Yes. And I was very upset, but they seemed to be even more so, so upset that they said, well, we could go up to Dockyard and start playing golf in the, the, the big graveyard up there, you know? I said, don't, don't do that, right? But they were serious. <laughs> <laughs> they were very serious, just to make a point. They said, well, we don't care if we get arrested. Yeah, this is nonsense. You know? And when you say the, oh, the graveyard and Dockyard, could you explain to us which graveyard you're referring that to? That would be the uh, military graveyard. Okay. You know, <laughs> just, just just for the just for the record, yeah. just wanted to make sure that, that was clear. And I said, don't do that. That's it's mm -hmm. yeah, don't don't. Understandable. But they were pretty angry, and you know, because while we were standing there looking at this thing, they were hitting balls into the, you know, 
we had two of them were down here and it didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. um, the, the issue is, is who actually gave permission to put that driving range there? Sure. You know, because knowing that, I mean, the issue was very hot at the time about the graveyard. It wasn't something obscure. We were talking about it. But who actually gave that permission? So one thing that we heard earlier today was from Mr. Stovall that, in fact, um, in 1996, there was a restoration done by yes. the... Uh, of the graveyard. Yes. Um, are you aware of that? Yes, I am, yes. Okay. And are you aware of who might have been responsible for that restoration project? Well, I would think that the, um, the, um, either the Castle Harbor at the time, mm -hmm. it, it could have either been the Castle or Tucker's, Tucker's Point, but I think it was Castle Harbor. Okay. So we uh, would like to show you a document. Um, it is a document that uh, Mr. Stubble presented, but based on what you've indicated, I think you would also be equally aware of it. So if you could put up uh, Mr. Stubble's page 10 of his exhibit. <coughs> is this monitor working here? This monitor, is it working? Okay. It should be missed. We're, we're getting it to uh, come up now. If we could just give it one second, hopefully it would work <coughs> very momentarily. Oh. Page 10. Page 10, yes. Okay. Oh, this is a later. Yes, this is the next one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this. Uh, we're going to also, uh, Mr. DeBoer, bring you a copy that we have just printed. I just want to um, ask you some questions in regards to that document, just so you could have it a bit easier than reading it off the screen. I know sometimes that's a little bit hard. So, uh, Mr. Dubois, um, just take a, a cursory look at the document just so you're able to indicate for us. Have you seen this Bermuda Sun article before? Um, yes, I did. I, I remember seeing this a little while back. Okay. So, um, Bermuda Properties, yes. Yes. So, Mr. Dubois, if you could do me a favor, um, if you look on the left hand side of the document, yes. um, at the bottom, it, bottom of that first uh, section, Yes. It starts with the graveyard served. Yes. Um, yes. Could you go? Could you read from there, right across to where the uh, second last sentence on the next set of do of the document there? Sure. Second column. Sorry. All right. Trying to get it right. The uh, if you, yes. The graveyard serves two Tuckerstown Methodist churches: St. Philip's Amy Church and Mazden Memorial but fell into disuse after more than 300 people were moved out. In the years since, the stone wall enclosing the graveyard crumbled. The tops of the graves had collapsed and the whole area had become overgrown with vegetation. Okay. Um, Marsden's minister, Reverend Peter Tink, said that, said the graves were a real mess. He said he discovered it when he was playing golf and found himself staring in an open grave. For the last two years, Mazden's Church and Bermuda Properties, which owns the Castle Harbor property, have been working on restoring the graveyard. So, would it be fair to assume at this particular point in time Oh, sorry. And could we just read the next two sentences? So where it goes on to mention um, the overgrown was cleared and so forth, right up until the, that next paragraph. Um, okay. Full stop. The overgrowth was cleared away. The stone wall was rebuilt, 
and the tops of the graves were replaced. All the work was paid for by the Bermuda Properties, which will also maintain the graveyard. Peter Parker, John Oh, that's, that's fine, because, sorry, okay. we can stop right. here, Mr. Dubois. So, Mr. Dubois, based on what you see here, would it be, in your view, reasonable to believe that the Mars Church would have been aware of the restoration efforts? Um, yes, but you see, my, my problem is this. If the uh, hotel or the Bermuda properties had promised, and it wouldn't have been them, mm -hmm. you know, it would have been the, either the original Castle Harbor or the um, Bermuda Development Company. Between those two, through the years, the graveyard fell in disrepair. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a few people from the Devil's Hill community that actually saw the graveyard mm -hmm. all it was gr overgrown and everything and they alerted the public to what was going on so why did it take all of that to to maintain a graveyard you know it's, they promised to, to to keep it and I can understand that as you you have different companies that own a piece of property or a um, um, golf course like that, mm -hmm. communication, right, from one company gets <laughs> mixed up. Mm -hmm. But it was there for everybody to see. Sure. You know? Now, Mr. Dubois, why we brought this up was is that earlier today, the Marsden Church indicated that they weren't aware of the grave tops um, and that that was, I guess, the best way to put it, outside of the knowledge. Um, and that when they received the documentation from Dr. Harris, they then acted upon what was given to them by Dr. Harris. The grave tops? Yes. Um, the indication that the graves were moved and, and the grave tops destroyed um, by the Marsden Church, uh, sorry, by Marsden Church in 2012. You're aware of that, yes? Yes, yes. yes. So our understanding is from what the Marsden Church has at least alluded to today is that they were not aware of this, grave tops being old, simply because they had relied on what Dr. Harris had said and that they knew anything else. So well, what we're simply wanting to ask you is, from what you are aware of, would that in fact be reasonable? Well, we were meeting with the Marsden Church. Okay on this project okay. and um, you know we thought it was a good idea to do a sci scientific review on the whole thing mm -hmm. but nobody told us that they were going to destroy the graves you know um, I was quite shocked when I got a call one day mm -hmm. he said he was a cab driver you know he wouldn't give his name and uh, he told me that they had destroyed the tops of the graves I said what do you mean well, you know, they're just big holes with the grave. This, this is what big holes with the graves are. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I said, "Well, what?" And I, then, again, I called Denny. I said, "Denny, you know what's going on in Pakistan?" He says, "No." He says, "Well, they did just destroy, destroy the graves." Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, nobody had told us that this was going to happen, right? And even though we were in talks, we had two meetings with Mazen's church, yes, bef and with and one with Dr. Harris before, you know, this happened. And um, I can't tell you, I was physically sick when I went down there. We went, Eugene, Eugene Stovall, I mean, Denny picked us all up. We went directly down to, down to, Tuckers, down to the graveyard. And I was physically sick when I saw it, I'm you sure. know. Uh, just couldn't believe what I saw. And um, there was, Dr. Harris in the newspaper is unapologetic as possible, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a sight to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've seen the picture, right? The picture of the place. Yes, we um, did. I mean, if you had a if you had a uh, relative buried in a graveyard, would you like to see something like that done? You know, even though you know there's a question of whether or not that is the actual graveyard at this point. But as far as I was, I was concerned, at that point, that was 
the graveyard that my grandfather was buried in. Um, and then you also mentioned that in your perspective, um, there's been no respect shown for Takistan graveyard and that the former residents who lived in Takistan seem to just be simply disregarded. It seems rarely that <clears throat> there was respect, only until somebody says something about it, that something gets done about it. You know, but it'll sit there and sit there you know, until somebody complains. You know, either to the, the, the church or, or to the, 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 the uh, golf club, or, you know, it just, just it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, even these trees, it's, it's, there are pictures on the graveyard that we took later on after this thing that um, um, the Bermuda property's done here. Mm -hmm. And you still had trees growing all over the place and stuff like that, you know. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And um, you also mentioned how, you know, you were shocked to know about the Tacos Point Golf Club making this the graveyard area, part, a of, part it. of it, into a driving range. Of course, who wouldn't be? Mm -hmm. But I'm saying is th what I'm saying is this. This was during a time when the story was very much in the news. Mm -hmm. You know, that shows complete disrespect and I want to know which political party you know we're in charge of that who was in during that time mm -hmm. you know <laughs> it's not the, the disrespect doesn't start with the mom um, Tucker's point you know it, it's enough blame to go all around mm -hmm. and you also mentioned that you um, had filed a complaint with the police. Yeah, it's the Takistan Historical Society, yes, filed a complaint with the police, yes. And that was done in or about July 2014? Yes. Okay. yes. And that, um, as far as you're aware, there has been no movement by the Bermuda Police Service in terms of this complaint? No. We haven't heard anything anyway. And in terms of that particular aspect of it, filing a complaint and having no response, how are you feeling about that particular aspect of, the, of this issue? Uh, at some point, I had to check out because of my health. Okay. Right? I even started to write about this, and I had to stop. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. you have arrhythmia. You start getting dizzy and stuff like that regularly. And you have to, you know, you can't do that sort of work. It's mm -hmm. a lot of concentration. But I did start, you know. Mm -hmm. I started a story on, on, on Tucker's Town. Um. And one final question. In terms of subsequent to the police complaint and everything that you found with what's happened at Tucker's Point um, and the graveyard in general, have you had any conversations or have or are you aware of conversations between the organization, the Tucker's Point Historical so Tucker's Town Historical Society and Tucker's Point Hotel in terms of this whole issue or trying to come to a resolution? Well, we've, we've had meetings with, with Tucker's Point, mm -hmm. yes. We've been part of meetings. The Tucker's Town Historical Society has been in part in, in meetings with, in fact, Mars and Church and Tucker's Point, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think Tucker's Point will probably do anything that Mars and Church wants. Right, I think, but I don't know. I, I think we have to be more aggressive about this, you know. Okay. Um, this is, I mean, that graveyard will be there 200 years, you know, at least two, well, 100 years, I should, should say. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, Nobody seems to care. Only when people are forced to do what they're supposed to do, that they do things, you know. I was hoping that we could have got some sort of program when we first started to talk to Tucker's Point and Master's Church about this. So that, you know, you, you wouldn't get to a point where this everything's overgrown, mm -hmm. stuff like that. They have a 
you know, a, a, a regular program to clean things up, you know. Um, but <sighs> to no avail, I mean. Okay. Well, Mr. Dubois, I appreciate you giving your evidence today. Um, for me, those are my questions, but um, we also have President Franny Moss and Judge Reverend Whalen, who has received adverse notice yeah. in terms of this whole issue, um, and he may in fact have some questions for you next. Yeah. So I'll turn the floor over to him, yeah. and then subsequently after that, you'll get some questions from the commissioners. And if anything else comes as a result of that, we may have further questions for you, but at this time, those are my questions. Okay, thank you. Is Pastor Waylon here? Yeah, he's in the back. Will he be asking any questions? Come forward, please. Thank you, Justice and Commissioners and Council. Um, Mr. Dubois. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Um, the last question, I think it was the last question that the council was asking, I believe, was, uh, if I understood correctly, um, were there any conversations between Turkestan Historical Society and Rosewood Tucker's Point since the uh, removal of the, the grave tops? Well, I, I, I'm, I, yeah. that wasn't the question? That was the question, yeah. Okay, maybe I misunderstood. Um, okay, so um, with regards to after, I know we, the, the church, uh, Morrison Church and Turkestown Historical Society had been um, meeting and yes, various did. times uh, going all the way back to 2007 and and even with curb um, yep. going up to uh, Rosewood Tucker's point um, and and we had set forth uh, a list of grievances yes um, and the first of which was to have the driving range relocated. Yes, yes. Do you recall that? Yes, we did. Right. And, and so it would be fair to say that Rosewood Tucker's point did not concede to that point. They said it wasn't an option, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yes. Okay, because I think you had mentioned that you thought that Rosewood Tucker's point would do whatever the church had asked. Well, um, they would they were paying attention more to you guys than they were to us. I mean, we, you know, we certainly made some recommendations after the meeting down at, um, during the meeting um, that we had when, when we all went down to, to Roosevelt Point. And none of this, hardly any of those recommendations, you know, I, I didn't see any of them, you know, really right. done, you know. But wouldn't you uh, agree also that the church had recommendations that Rosewood Tucker's Point had, had not fulfilled. Uh, actually, it's yes, been a of frustrating. Course. Very frustrating. Yes. And especially dealing with the whole netting issue. has been different general managers there, and we go goal, posts keeps on being moved. See, the thing is, we are not in the position. I mean, you you guys are the custodians of the, of the graveyard. We're not. Right. Right. Um, we have descendants buried in there. And we're coming from the point of view that um, we want the graveyard to look halfway decent, you know, for our descendants. We have no real right to tell Tucker's Point anything. You do. You do. You, you're the custodians. Right. All right. But collaboratively, we were both given voice. Oh, we, we tried, yes. Yeah, we, we tried. tried. Um, I had uh, spoken with, um, when questioning with uh, Mr. Stovall earlier today, um, he had mentioned that uh, 
Tucker's Town Historical Society felt that they had been left out of the loop around the um, matter with the recommendations from Dr. Harris and the ground penetrating survey. Well, well, no, I, I think you misunderstand. We, we were there uh, at the meetings at the beginning with you and Dr. Harris. I think what he, what he really meant was that we didn't get a voice when the, well, whoever gave the decision to destroy the graveyard, we never got a voice. Nobody called us to tell us what they were doing. No, that's what I was speaking to. Yeah. Right. No one. So, so the, um, so, so the church trustees, um, not myself, I, of course, could not make no, such I never a you. decision, but the uh, trustees, uh, um, I think, speaking on their behalf, in hindsight, definitely would concede that that was uh, uh, an error in judgment that we well, who should Who actually have. made that error in judgment? Pardon? Who actually made that error in judgment? I mean, that, you know, that's never been clear to us. Well, I'm just speaking of with regards to not having the conversation with um, the Tuckerstown Historical Society that we should have had a uh, further communication with Tuckerstown Historical Society. And so we apologize that that was not done because a lot of this could have been avoided oh, yeah. had that would have been done so. But just wanted it to be clear on the fact the council had raised the question about the church being unaware of, of something about the, the grave tops. What the recommendation that the church was, um, the trustees made a decision on was that later addition of the concrete tops. And so when we were given uh, the recommendation to restore it to a more natural, original state, they felt that that would be correct because to the trustees' knowledge, most of whom had descendants, as you know, buried at uh, uh, Tuckerstown, most of the membership of Mars and came out of Tuckerstown, and they certainly would not want to desecrate their own graveyard, they went along with the recommendation because they felt that these grave tops were added and we didn't even know who added them or what, and so it was going back to the original um, situation. This has been rumor that uh, that, to, that to, actually happened, yes. Okay, but to, but to my knowledge, the graves themselves were not destroyed. You said that the graves themselves we were We went down, no, I mean, the picture that I... When we, we went down to uh, the tops the or graveyard. the graves the themselves? The whole graves were dug up. I the graves were dug up? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was not something that the church was aware of or gave any consent to. Uh, but if you have that information, I'd be curious as to. It wasn't just the tops that were removed, the sides. We're trying to find out what's going on. I'm not too sure what exactly is being shared. We were really shocked. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang on, Mr. Devon. Let me just see the document, just so we're all aware of what's going on, so the commissioners and everyone can also agree what's happening. All the stones were replaced on the side. You were not, you came down right, I think, at one point. Could it go up All on the, the stones were replaced, yeah. put it on the side. Of, of, Could it go know, up the, on the screen? The stones, the stones from the side of the... Yes. Um, so if you will put up on the screen. The stones from, from the side of the graves, everything was placed on the side. Okay. Um, up against the wall, the, the wall. The wall. The, we're we'll just getting the document up so that the commissioners can follow you. Okay. Um, so if you can put up the report that was done by the Royal Gazette, I believe it was Mr. Stubble's number.
It was page 17, I believe. 16, sorry. 15? Yeah, no, page 15. No, you just passed it right there. Fifteen, yeah, page fifteen. Okay, so uh, Mr. Blotney, just double check and confirm that that is in fact the same one. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, so, so my understanding. You're saying that this shows that the graves are dug up or that the tops are... If you look at the sides of the graves, right, they're gone, right, if there was anybody in the first place because if this was something that was put there just to appease people and if the graveyard is really bigger, yeah. you know, that, that spends a whole different... Right. But um, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, they were, yes, yes. Um, some of the, some of the um, graves, you can't even see the dividing wall, you know? As we looked at, we were really shocked, right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, surely Marsons couldn't have done this. No, no, well, Marsons did not decision, do Made a decision to do this, right? Um, <laughs> you don't know what was going through our minds at the time. Yeah. But it was... Because well, Danny has... I mean, everybody has family in there. Right. Everybody and... That's just the church. We were quiet for a long time. When we, when we walked up to this place and we looked at it, we were quiet for a very long time. Okay. We just couldn't believe what we were seeing. Right. So I'm just... I'm looking at the uh, pictures as are, are you and I'm just trying to uh, ascertain because to the information that we have been operating with there were no graves dug up uh, that the issue was the tops being removed and so I think that this is what is causing a little bit of concern because of course the church would not have given any well, consent for, uh, and we were given assurances. I, I wish that, we had some more photos. But the graves were not destroyed themselves. I wish I, we had some more photos, and I can show you some of the graves. The center line, the center wall, was even pulled up. Okay. See. Um, and like I said, the, the actual stones were placed against the perimeter wall. Do you have any information as to who actually carried out? I, I know that, to my knowledge, uh, Dr. Harris was supposed to be overseeing the work, but do you know exactly who was con contracted to do this? Well, it, it, it was Just to be it, clear, the church, uh, we were not overseeing this nor were we on site and we were not aware of actually when it was transpired. But do you have information? Well, have you gathered inform we, we, we information, information as to who? I don't have it on me right now. Sorry, one second. Reverend uh, Valen, one second. Uh, Justice, I, I do understand that Reverend Valen is trying to put forth the position on behalf of the Marsden Church. It would appear that a lot of what's being mentioned would be what Reverend Whalen and or any of his parishioners may give evidence on. So I'm not quite sure if this particular avenue at this point is, is helpful. Um, we may in fact just be going back and forth about fundamental differences as to evidence. Um, so we would say at this point that our objection would be that if Reverend Whalen has any further questions to put to Mr. Dubois, he, he couldn't do so. But I think if it's subject to his evidence, then that will be something that we can possibly deal with once it's raised, give his evidence. But I, I would think that at this point, that particular course is not, is not going to serve us well at this point. Because as an example, Justice, uh, Reverend Valen has indicated that the Marsden Church simply was uh, 
overseeing the project. They didn't actually actively participate. So, no, no, that's not sorry, what my apologies. They were not overseeing the project. But I believe yes. Reverend Whalen is given, Pastor Whalen is given an indication that he will be testifying in due course and he'll be filing a statement. Yes, is that correct? Yes, it's correct. And and a member, one of your parishioners will be filing a statement as well, yes? The former chairman of the trustee. Okay. Yes. And so if there's anything that they will be saying in the statement, it can't be put to this witness at this stage because there's nothing before, um, you know, uh, counsel that can counter it or knew that it is forthcoming. And so, um, yes, I understand. refrain from asking those questions at this point. You'll be given another opportunity to do so. But the last uh, question is not okay. in order. Because Mr. Dubois is here, and if we need to have him back, we can certainly okay. do so. Can I ask about the question? Yes, about, yes, go ahead. Um, of course. If I, I was asking if Mr. Dubois had information as to who actually carried out the uh, work the construction, who actually? The only thing I could tell you right now is that Dr. Harris, he was a contact person, right? He was a contact person. I, I never met any of the scientists that came in. Um, he was the only person that we actually talked to, and we talked to him when you were there, right? So, I mean, I had that information home, but, I, you know, I don't, I don't have it with me right now. But he was in charge of the project, um, and um, that's all I can tell you. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. Uh, commissioners will now ask a few questions. A few of the commissioners, could you start, Ms. Ford? Yes. I keep forgetting to turn on my mic. Good afternoon, Mr. Dubois. Good afternoon. I just have one question. Um, formal contract between Tucker's Point and the trustees of the Marsden Church, or is it just an oral agreement as to who was to maintain the gravesite? Yes, there may be um, something in writing. Um, we haven't come across anything yet, but there may be. Um, like I said, but I haven't seen anything yet. There would have had to be at some point. You know. These are the details that we can't get our hands on. You know. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chabu, I believe you wish to ask something. Good afternoon, Mr. Dubois. Yes. Thank you afternoon. for your uh, submission thus far. Um, I just have one question, and it's, I guess, you being intricately involved in bringing, shedding light on aspect of the Takas Town uh, history. Um, as has been stated uh, and reiterated, in these proceedings, um, Bermuda is a place of laws. Um, within that context, and your and your experiences, of course, on the Tarkastown burial grounds, do you believe that um, a legislative remedy is necessary to resolve the matter? It's possible that, that it may come to that. I guess you know. Um, it, it, it is possible that it will come to that. Um, we've had remedies like that for other, I mean, other historical societies, other buildings, you know. Um, it may have to come to that. Because if it doesn't, then it possibly can happen again and again and again and again. You know, maybe it'll be another church or you know, right now the churches now are not as full as they used to be. You know, a lot of the old churches, um, they have graveyards, you know. And another, say, 100 years, somebody comes along and, oh, well, just 
completely disregards what was there, you know? Thank you, that's, that's my only question. Thank you, Mr. Stubble, Mr. Starling. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. DeBock. Certainly a lot to think about regarding the cemetery, which I will be reflecting on. I would like to actually ask you a question outside of the issue of the Tuckerstown Cemetery and beyond your statement. I just want to take advantage of having you here. Um, based on your statement, it seems clear to me that you have uh, deep family roots in Tuckerstown. Yes. Did you have family members living in Tuckerstown at, in 1920? Yes, I did. My grandmother was living, and, and um, my great-grandfather and um, my great-grandmother, they were living in, in fact, both sides of my family, from the Harveys. I had grandparents from the Harveys and from the Basins living in Tuckerstown. And they were the last to sell, by the way, some of the last to sell anyway. That was uh, going to be my follow-up question. Yeah. Was how much knowledge do you know about their experience with the expropriation in 1920, and would you be willing to share? Well, my grandmother was in her early teens. Now, she's a very bright girl, and she would have remembered this, you know. Um, she would never talk about it. Um, I'll tell you what, the first time I even thought about Pakistan, I was about seven years old, and I was walking down by Pink Beach um, on tennis courts, if you look across the mangrove lake, that's where our family house is. It's still there. The only thing that's changed, there was a screen, screen in porch there, and they've actually um, built on there. But that's when I started to ask questions about Tuckerstown. Mm -hmm. But nobody would tell me. I think the, the very first time I, I got the opportunity to visit that house was like in 2012. I went down there with a... a 95-year-old cousin and uh, Curb, a few members from Curb and the Tuckerstown Historical Society, and we looked around. What a gorgeous place! What a and and you know, looking at when it was actually sold. There's a story about it being sold in the Gazette, and they said it was a good, a nice house by any standard. Right. Um, you know, my, my biggest issue about Tuck, one of the other issues is that it was a backwater. And I know why people say that, so they can justify, you know, the actual appropriation, you know. Um, but I, for instance, my grandfather, um, not Harvey. I've got something written down here. My grandfather Thomas Beasley, right? Um, he wasn't, like I said, he, was, he wasn't just a, a, a part of the Tuckerstown community. You know, he was a part of the, the whole Bermuda society, basically. Um, he married into a, a, a very very well-known family. Um, my, my grandmother's father was a, a, a big man in, in business. This was just prior to emanci emancipation, you know? And he would have never gotten into that family if he was part of a backwater. Never. I mean, his son, right, one of his sons became the second some um, black parliamentarian in Bermuda. The other son became the very first lawyer in Bermuda, right, black lawyer. Um, he would have never gotten into that family if, if um, um, he was from a backwater. If I can just go back to the property, do you know how big it was and what the compensation was and whether in your family history it was fair and that your family considered it fair? Well, we, we got where I stay now. It's Harvey Hill, and that's what we got from the Harvey side. From the Bayes inside, we got a piece of property down by 
right across from Pink Beach. Mm. Still there. Um, my, my sister actually owns it. All right. um, I look at the property down in Tuckerstown, and I can't imagine what it looked out, like without the golf course. But it was some space down there. You know, it was some, you know, I don't remember the full um, anchorage right now. You know, I didn't write, I should have wrote all that stuff down, but I didn't. I, was, I rushed to do this, right? Because I did it at the last minute. Um, I wasn't going to present anything because I, I was still dealing with my health. Yeah. But I, I, I put some things together, you know, I thought were pertinent. But, yeah, we, we got, in fact, my, um, on the um, business side, we got property and we got some money, apparently, you know, according to the represent. Okay. Yes. Thank you for sharing some of your family history and yes. helping us get a, an understanding of the situation in 1920. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starling. Commissioners and... No redress justice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubois, for your time. Thank you. Um, and helping us to understand what went on. Okay. And that's the end of your evidence for now. In the event we need to recall you, we'll give you some notice. Right. Because as I've indicated before, we have had to serve adverse notice on other individuals, um, which what that means is if there has been any type of reputational damage, um, that people may feel because of the evidence, then they have an opportunity to come in and be heard. Your Honor, I just found out that I was supposed to do this a couple of days ago. <laughs> you know, so I was just found out that I was supposed to be here a couple of days ago. So, I, you know, I've been interviewed, but I didn't realize the interview would also include something like this. I didn't know. <laughs> well, never mind. A fuller thank you. Okay. Lovely. And uh, we might possibly need to call you again. All right. And this time we will try and give you more notice. All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, is that all your witness? No, it's coming tomorrow. Uh, we have one more witness tomorrow, Justice, Mr. Richardson. Uh, we have tomorrow, Mr. Danny Richardson, but no more witnesses for today. Uh, I see that I've got that I'm not being heard, so I'm still getting used to my mic. <laughs> Thank you all, Thank and you we'll now adjourn.